In honour of Tom's visit, the curator of the museum, Rosa, gave Tom and Derek a guided tour of various exhibits. So um, here we are in the hearth and home section of the museum. The museum is all about objects, but it's yeah. really about the people who use them as well. And uh, what we have here is a house that would have been represented 1850 to 1950 different furniture. And still today. And still today. <laughs> I'm looking exactly. at some objects yeah. up there that my parents mm. have at home. There's a sacred heart on the wall. So would this be any way it's familiar with you, that, That's the old type of settlement, is That is, yeah. yeah. The other styles of chairs as well, yeah. the Sugon. The tomb chair is probably the older one and that will be a more modern one there. So is yeah. all this section, is it all, all this section, the house yeah. and home yeah. sort of thing, how people lived? That's right, in the home, in the hearth, and uh, washing and cooking, that, that type of thing. Mm. But uh, do you have your envelopes with you? I do, yes. yes. No, you know what they're for? No, they're well, no, I actually don't know what they're for. Yeah. All I know is that something my name sacred. on it. You're going to have to make something here yeah, today. Some right. Something that might be in this room. Uh, like what? Huh? Well, perhaps, uh, would you like to make a turf basket? Um, there's some nice uh, blacksmith work over here. Uh, yeah. um, I'd love to make a turf basket, but unfortunately I don't have an open fire at home. So it'd be of no benefit to me whatsoever. Oh, well, modern, kind of Are you going to open things. your envelopes? Yeah. Yes, yeah. all right. All right. Have so you got some music, appropriate music? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, secret, the secret is going to be out now, the head. That's it. it. Might be something you've used before. I'm making a Sugon chair. Is that how you pronounce it? Sugon? Sugon, that's it. Yeah, a Sugon chair, man. Have you ever even sat on a Sugon no, chair? No, no. And now you're going to make one? Going to make one They're now. a monster yeah. uh, from your part of the world, really, as well. Well, Thomas, yeah. you learn something new every day. Every day, even so from, from the Mayo to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> Although all is now revealed regarding the task, Tom went to great lengths before arriving in Castle Bar to get some idea of what his trip would involve, including searching the museum's website. So the computers are just yep. here, ready for... To, oh, I don't think we're going to do a lot, Tom, because we're disconnected. So now we're going to have yep. to go through this. I do know how this yep. is going In our Get It section each week, we'll be looking at some aspect of new technology. And for this first programme, I thought we'd start with the basics of putting a computer together. Thankfully, it's an easier job now than it used to be. Nowadays, they make most of the different connectors of a computer to fit into one place and one place only. And where there's any danger that it might still be confusing, they use colour to help sort it out. Your typical computer setup has four main parts to it. The monitor, which looks a bit like a small TV, the computer itself, the keyboard and the mouse. The monitor, the keyboard and the mouse all have to be connected into the back of the computer. Each of them has its own lead with a different connector. The theory is that everything should connect together very easily and if it doesn't, you might be trying to plug something into the wrong place. So if that happens, just double check. The monitor connector goes into this socket at the back of the computer. It's a good idea to screw in the little screws beside the connector because they stop the lead coming loose and falling out. The connectors for the keyboard and the mouse are the same shape, so you could get them mixed up, but they've thought of that one. The two connectors are different colours and they've got different symbols on them. So the green connector, which in this case is for the mouse, goes into the green socket and the purple connector for the keyboard guess what? Goes into the purple socket. And finally, there are two power leads, one for the monitor and one for the computer itself. Once you've managed to put your computer together, you're ready to switch it on. You know what you want to look for? Yeah. And it's the National Museum of Ireland Country Life. Yeah. One click will yeah. take you in. Now, so you're going to be given a task, yeah, Tom. Yeah, to do something, yeah. yeah. You, you've no idea what... No, I haven't, no. So you do a little bit of research. Yeah, I do. Let's have a look here and see, maybe we might get a clue here. Yeah. What do you think yourself would be something that they uh, might ask you to do? Um, first one might be interested in... Uh, <laughs> Putty making. 
So would you be able to do that? Yeah, yeah, I'd say I would, yeah. All maybe we might jump over that one. No, How about maybe, that, maybe yeah. this one here? Have a go at the last event. Maybe the highlights. Would that give us some some clue? Yeah, it might, yeah. Over here? Yeah. And if we go down, what do you think yourself? Should we print this I page, think we should. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you know how to print. I don't did. So you go to your symbol. It, no. All right, so it's printed, so... We're all ready. You're all ready, ready to, to go. go. Yeah. And into the unknown. Into the unknown. Because you don't know what you're going to do yeah. on Thursday. Ready to go. The guided tour over, Rosa brought Derek and Tom to the craft centre to step into the shoes of their forefathers. The task of making a traditional Sugon chair was to begin with the expert help of Pat Broderick. Hi Pat, are you a Mayo man as well, are you? No, I'm a Limerick man. The Limerick man, is there anybody from Mayo living in Mayo at all? <laughs> and are you staying for this, Rosa? Well, thanks a million, much appreciated. Right, so, we'll make a start? We'll make a start, right okay. off. Let's do it. Now tell me about this, uh, because you know all about this, I know that, Tom. This is for a real old type Irish rope. Yeah. It was before there was any twine. It was for uh, holding down hay, straw, or tash ropes. It's actually really very simple, isn't it? It is. But anyway, listen, going back to learning, has that changed your outlook on life? It certainly has. It's given me more confidence in life. You know what I say, I do things you know, that normally wouldn't even attempt them. Yeah, like what? Well, I always have problems say with uh, right now to check. But I've done, it was putting a name on a person's name that I was giving it to. And uh, more than likely, I would, I would get them to send their name on it. Oh, I see. So that's something I wouldn't do now. But you see, nobody likes parting with money, Tom, is it? Isn't that true? Yep. But it might, I suppose that we'd all much rather receive a cheque than write one. And yep. it, it can be tricky, actually, writing a cheque, because you've got to write the numbers out as figures, as well as actually spelling them. And people do have difficulty with that, I know. And that was a problem that you name, encountered, yeah. wasn't it? But spelling your name was a problem. That's one of the learning points which is coming up right now. We'll continue to make the rope, and you can learn from the learning point. We all know cheques can be useful if you're buying something expensive and if you don't want to carry around a load of cash, which isn't a good idea these days. So our writing tip for this programme is on filling them out. Every bank has its own individual cheque and it'll have the bank's name and your account number on it. But no matter what your cheque looks like, you still need to fill in the same information. So. Let's say you've just bought a camera from O'Neill's camera shop and it costs 290 euro. You'll need to fill in the name of the person you're paying the money to. In this case, you're paying the money to a company. So you write their name just after the word pay, O'Neill's camera shop. Now the amount. You write that two ways. You write the amount in numbers beside the euro symbol, 290 euro, 290 -00. And then you write the number again, but this time you write it in words. The idea is that you don't want someone to say, oops, sorry, I thought you said 2,900 euro. The date goes up at the top. There's a few different ways you could write it, and this is one way. 4 slash 10 slash 04. So that's the 4th of October, 2004. And finally, the last thing you do is sign it with your own name. You look like you've been doing that all your life, Tom, you know that? Yeah, well, that's because farmers are always fairly handy as well. You would be doing some jobs like this. So how did you get back into learning then? Or was it something you had planned to do or was it just something that no, well, followed as, on? As when you get the farm assistance you are in financial trouble. The scheme is there's uh, the adult centre telemore always visit the local workers, the Santa Community Employment Scheme. And uh, my local supervisor Pat Spence said, look, you're getting a chance here and you're going to get one on the So take it. And I did. I have learned a lot through say, history and uh, I'm going to be doing a 100 hour course on my note. And my goal has to be a degree. Degree? Oh, yeah. So uh, that would be my goal in life. It's going to involve an awful lot of hard work. That is. So you have to be committed to do it, you see? I certainly would. That's it. That's your saw. Am I going to put it down here? Put it down there. Put it in there. Long strokes now. All the way around. That's it. All the way around. We have to get to a special piece. Seven eight. Seven eight. Right. That's the one.
Alex, time to finish up. I know, but I'm just, I'm just running out actually. Right, as right just the last bit now to push it through. Right there, right, Tom. That's it, that's it. Time's up. Just lay down there now, Tom. Three. Count down from three. Three, two, two one. One. Alright. No, it worked. It did work. It did work. How's yours? Very well, yeah. Mine is very secure too. Yeah, you're, you're, you're up here on me now. I'm not going well, to I'm taller. <laughs> I'm not going to get caught now and make a decision on who did the best year. So I think we'll call in Bernie from the museum. Oh, we Bernie's coming. We put her in the hot seat. Okay, well while we're waiting on Bernie, you can have a look back at some of the key points we covered on today's programme. While we're waiting for Bernie, of course. It's very comfortable. How's yours? There was lots of useful information in this week's programme. Our reading tip was about scanning and we saw how you can find information quickly by looking just for the bits you need and not bothering to read every single word. Our writing tip was about filling in a cheque and where to write the name of whoever you're paying the money to, the amount in numbers and words and the date. And don't forget to sign the cheque as well. The spelling tip was about dropping the E at the end of some words when you add an ending like ING so that a word like write becomes writing. And finally, our get it was all about putting a computer together. Most connectors only fit into one socket to make it easier. And where there's any confusion, look out for the colour coding. Bernie, get in here quick. Tell us who wins, who's going to get the big prize at um. test one for them now. Not very sturdy. I think that one is the best one. That's my one, if you don't mind. No, actually, I like this one, so I have to pick this as the winner. What are you going to give to him? You've got something for him? I have a present for you, Tom, just to say, well done. You did put a lot of work in today and right throughout the program, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I've got to show you something because down here, I've got a copy of the brand new Read Right Now uh, workbook. It's number five. And to get it, it's free, remember. All you've got to do is pick up the old Hello machine and call us on 1 800. 20, 20, 65. Go to a phone, it's a free phone number, you get a free workbook, 1 800 20, 20 65. Next week, I'll be helping Kathleen Breen improve her cooking skills. She'll probably be helping me improve mine. That's in County Wicklow. See you then. Bye bye. Let's have a look at this phone. Turn it on there and we'll see what it does. <laughs> Read right now. Read right now.